So now that we have some data to work with, what we're going to do is use this data to create an original ground or an existing ground surface. So if you still have this in a 3D view or a custom view, let's go ahead and get it back to a top view. We'll click on custom view up, to, up top in the upper left hand corner. And from the drop down, we'll click top. That'll set this back to a top view. Now we want to turn off the objects except for the contour layers here. So what we're going to do is go to this layer isolate command or use the type in uh, LAYISO. Let's go ahead and do the LAYISO on the command line and press enter. The reason I want you to do this is because it brings up the settings and by default with Civil 3D, you probably have this set to lock and fade. I like to have it just set to off. So I'm going to click on off and do the same thing for the viewport. And what that'll do is it'll turn off all the objects versus locking them and saving and kind of shading them or making them a little bit faded. We just want to isolate them and turn everything else off except for the contours. So now it's asking me to select the objects on the layer to be isolated. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to left click and I'm going to go move my cursor from the lower right to the upper left. Make sure that I'm crossing a couple different contours, the both the magenta colored and the gray colored. And when I press enter, it'll turn off everything except those contours. So now what I can do is easy, make it, it, I'm doing this to make it easier to select this when we actually use this data to create the surface. So to create the surface, we're going to go over to the tool space, right click on surfaces and select create surface. From here, we can change the name to original ground. That's what we're going to call our existing surface. We're going to use the styles that are defined here. So I could come in and change this to be background, which is exactly what it is. But if I want one and five foot contours, I could change those. We're gonna keep it at two and 10. So that's acceptable. The only thing we are gonna change is this surface layer. So instead of C topo, I'm gonna to pick on that object, the uh, layer button here, and I'm gonna change the base layer name from C topo to V topo. So I'm going to click on this and we're going to click new. Now I may have already done this. So I'm going to scroll down and I did, I have a V topo layer. If you don't have V topo, click on new, enter in V dash topo and set your color. You can see because I had V topo selected, it picked up the default properties of that particular layer. So therefore, that's why it's got this color 64. Um, this doesn't really show or plot, so it doesn't really matter what the color is in this particular case. So since I already have VTopo, I'm just going to cancel this because it's going to tell me I need to have a unique name. So I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and pick that now that I've selected it or created it. We'll click OK. We don't have to worry about the modifier or anything like that. We'll click OK to that and I'll click OK again. Now, you're not gonna see anything as long as you look over here and I pull this down, there's no surface built yet because we still have to add data to the surface. All we did was create the surface object. So because these are contours, I'm gonna right click on contours. We're gonna select add and I'll go ahead and name this contours. And what these settings do is they weed out some of the data. So if the lines that you have have a lot of vertices, we may not need those vertices. So this, you know, if there's a vertice between like zero and, you know, 15 feet, it's, it's going to remove that. So every, if, if there's like one at six, seven and eight, it doesn't need that amount of data. So it's going to remove it. So about every 15 feet is going to weed out a point and it also depends on the angle you have set here. These default values are usually pretty good. So we're going to leave those the way they are. And we're going to keep all these settings here the way they are as well. You can play around with this and see what kind of results you get. 
But for the most part, this is pretty much the acceptable information that we're looking for. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to ask me to select contours. So I'm going to left click in the upper right or upper left, and I'm going to drag my cursor to the lower right. I'm going to left click again, selecting those contours. And when I right click or press enter, it's going to create a surface. Now I know it's created a surface because I see this little triangle here and it's got some data within the contours and it did some edits for us. And you can see that it's got about 601 contours or 601 objects. Now you're not seeing anything because remember we isolated those layers. So what we want to do is just come up here to our home tab and unisolate all the layers. Now you'll see that we have a surface. I can select this green boundary. You can see that it's kind of triangulating outside of some of our data, but it looks pretty good because it's overlaying the contours. So the contours that are being created from the triangulation are matching the contours that were created or imported from the aerial survey or aerial data that we brought into the drawing. Now, if you select that object or surface, you can right click and go to the object viewer. And what we can do here is look at this in 3D. So now I have this little viewer that I can rotate with my left mouse button. And now you can see some of the terrain or surface that we're working with. Right? And you can choose how you want to view it conceptual, 3D, realistic, however, right? So now you can see the triangulation and all the triangles that were created. The reason you don't see triangles here is just because of the style that we have assigned to that surface. Now we want to clean this up a little bit and make some edits to it, but we could just start by using this surface right here and moving on to, you know, creating in some design data. But like I said, we've got some additional data like these points that we want to add in to supplement that surface. Because if we look at the surface and we go to the surface properties, what we can do is change the surface style to show the triangles. So if I do contours and triangles and I click OK, we'll see that the triangulation is not picking up these spot shots. So in this area here, there may be a low or a high spot that we're not really picking up in our surface and we want to make sure our surface is as accurate as possible. So we're going to supplement and add that data. So to do that, what we're going to do is similar to what we did before. We're going to come up here and go to isolate. Now we don't have to type in layer isolate because we already changed that setting. But if I pick on layer isolate here and it says select the object, you can see that comes up here as well. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to pick this X and I'm going to press enter and it isolates that. So now I've got all these spot shots. Now I don't want to use the text. I only want to use the spots or the X's. So if I select the X, right click and select similar, it will only pick and select all the axes. Now I can come over here and we can use drawing objects by right clicking on that, selecting add. And the object type is a, could be a point, line, block, text, or 3D faces or polyface. So before we do that, I'm just gonna cancel out of that. I'm gonna right click and go to properties and we can see that those are blocks, right? So it's a layer, it's on spot elevation. It's a block reference, all right? So we know that's the object type. So now when I right click on drawing objects, select add, we're gonna select blocks and we'll just call it spot shots or spots. We'll click okay. And now oops, it's gonna ask me to select the blocks. So it's found one and it added that one. So what I can do, and I can do this again, let's add, 
And let's choose blocks again. And we'll call this spots. And I'll click OK. It deselected that. I thought it would keep it by selecting it first. But in this case, you can see I have to actually select it after the case. But by doing this and choosing block as the type, it's not going to pick up the text. So I didn't really have to do that select similar. In this case, it automatically added those blocks and not the text. So if I go back up to layer on isolate, turn that back on. Now you'll see that the surface has been rebuilt and it's picking up those spot shots and not the text. So now we've got a better surface with a little bit more detail in these high and low areas. So now we can select the surface, right click, go to surface properties, and we can change that back to 2 and 10 background for the surface style. Click OK. And now we've got a surface that we can work with in our design process and design workflow.